Hey friend, Chris here from White Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to do a deeper dive into the tight integration the Launch Key Mark IV from Novation has with Logic. This is in collaboration with Novation, but if you're not familiar, the Launch Key Mark IV is an awesome USB keyboard controller that provides you with direct access and control over your Logic projects. So not only can you perform with it, but you can also control things like transport, plug-in and EQ control, mixer controls like pan, fader, sends, and live loop control. So I want to do a deeper dive here for you because it's a really awesome controller. I love using it, and it just seems like there's not many controllers out there for us Logic users. Really, most manufacturers, in my opinion, kind of do the bare minimum, and here, the Novation has not done the bare minimum. It's awesome. Let's dig into it. Okay, taking a look at the top down of the Launch Key Mark IV, in this case, this is the 25 key version. I got to say, I really love the layout of this thing. I think it's elegant. Of course, keys, drum pads, transport control. There are many different dedicated modes for the Launch Key Mark IV. And all you have to do is hold shift to select between these different modes using the drum pads. So when I hold shift and press on the fourth pad on the top row from the left, the drum pads switch to transport mode. What happens here is that the encoders directly above the drum pads change up their functionality. So you can see in the LED in the upper left-hand corner, which transport controls you can use with each encoder. In this case, the first four encoders are scrub. So you can see that I'm scrubbing along the timeline in Logic Pro. The second encoder is for zoom. So you can zoom in horizontally wherever the playhead is. The third encoder is for the loop start or cycle start. So that yellow bar at the top of the project, I can adjust the loop start for the cycle range and the loop end using the fourth encoder. And just like that, I'm all set up to play. The fifth encoder I'm a big fan of, and it's the ability to navigate from marker to marker. So I could start playback from any marker that I've specified in my projects, And obviously, you can navigate to anywhere you planted a marker. Encoders 6 and 7 don't have any functionality. And the last encoder is to increase or decrease the BPM or tempo of your project. So this is a really easy way to, you know, just bump up the tempo or reduce it. You can see that one of my regions here is actually empty locked. So let me unlock it. Let's make that adjustment again. And I have audio down here. I should enable flex for that. But, you know, just to quickly demonstrate here, I'll adjust this to maybe 100 beats per minute. Or I can go in the other direction, so 70 BPM. So obviously, really handy for navigating your project, getting a feel for the tempo of your project. And you can do this all again from the Launch Key Mark IV. Of course, not specific to transport mode, but I am using some transport controls in the right-hand side of the controller from play to stop, enabling or disabling the cycle range. And of course, I could record as well. The next mode that I think is extremely helpful is the mixer mode. So just by holding shift again and pressing on the second drum pad at the top, I'm able to switch the behavior of the encoders to focus in on the mixer. I'll use the track buttons to select the modern TR-707 track. And notice the highlighted drum pad in the top row of the drum pads changes with the track selection. And what's great about this is, is that you can see which track is selected right on the launch key. And that's because the first row of drum pads adopts the color of your tracks and channel strips in your projects. So instead of solely using the track buttons to navigate, I can actually press on a drum pad to select that track. The bottom row of drum pads at this moment are red and this indicates which tracks are record enabled. So I could record enable several of my tracks right from the controller. Right, so we can see the structure base, both versions, the dark and distant, and something human are all record enabled now. And I can press again to disable each. If I press on the down arrow to the left of the drum pads, there's also options for solo and mute. So I could solo my drums and begin playback. And 
and the blue blinking drum pads indicate to us which tracks are currently not soloed. I could go in the opposite direction. I could unsolo and then mute the drums as I'm listening. Of course, we probably want to see the mixer to see these changes. So I'm going to use a custom mode. So I'll hold shift and press on the custom one drum pad. The Launch Key Mark IV actually has a companion application. It's the components application. And with it, you can customize the functionality of the controller. So I installed the pre-made Logic Pro keyboard shortcut custom mode to the Launch Key. And from here, I can open the mixer just by pressing again on a drum pad. Okay, I'm going to switch it back to DAW mode so I can see what's going on with the mixer. From here, I can start playing with levels with the encoders. Beyond that, if you press on the down arrow to the right of the encoders, there's also options for panning. So let me try panning some of my keys. The next page down is EQ control. Here you have control over four different bands of the channel EQ, the low shelf, the high shelf, and two peak bands. The odd encoders are for the frequency of each band. The even encoders are for the boost or reduction of each band. I'll set my EQ back to where I had it. Next up is plug-in mode. So by holding shift and pressing on the first drum pad in the upper row, I switch the view to plug-in mode. So let's now switch the view, once again with a custom mode, to smart controls. Right here, you have control over smart controls 1 through 12 with the eight encoders at the top. So I'll go down to my Cubus Waves track. I'll just tap on the drum pad because I can see it in the mixer mode. And right here, I have direct control again over different smart control functions. Of course, we don't know which functions I have control over, but if I hold shift once again and turn an encoder, I can see in the OLED what control I would be affecting. So in this case, we can see that the first control would be the flanger. The second control would be for reverb. Third is for the high pass cutoff. Fourth is for the filter mod. The fifth is for the octave. Sixth would be attack. Seventh for decay eighth for resonance, and there's another tab of controls, so 9 through 12. So I'll hit play, and I'll just start playing around with these different controls. From there, we have send mode. So holding shift, I press the third drum pad in from the right on the top row. Sends mode is great because you can actually page through through all 12 possible slots for your tracks and channel strips. Remember, the top row of colored drum pads correspond with the colors of your tracks, and the encoders above the drum pads correspond with the track below. Here, I'll press play and dial up some delay. Or I can switch to the next page for slot two, introducing some reverb. Right 
Right there, there's so much power and control between the plug-in mixer sends and transport modes of the launch key, but there's also a live loops mode. So if you're one to capture your ideas first and test them out against each other before you commit to a linear arrangement, the launch key can support your workflow as well in the live loops grid. All you have to do is press on the function button to the right of the drum pads. This switches the drum pad functionality to cells and scenes. Here, you can see I have six scenes in my live loops grid. You can navigate up and down through the cells just by pressing on the up and down arrows to the left of the drum pads. You can begin playback of a cell just by tapping on that lit up drum pad. Or begin playback of an entire scene by pressing on the lit up green drum pads in the bottom row. So I can start up playback and just enable different cells by using the up and down arrows. Plus, you can record into a cell just by pressing on a drum pad that's not currently highlighted. There you go, direct control and deep integration with Logic Pro right from a USB controller, the Launch Key Mark IV from Novation. So I hope today's video was helpful for you and I'll check you for more later. Take care.